Hey, good morning, Riverside. So awesome to see all of you here together today. As Shannon mentioned, my name is David. If we've never had the chance to meet, I would love to meet you, both Shannon and I. Some of our other leaders will be in the lounge right after the service is over. We would love just to meet you. As she mentioned, you drop that info card in. That begins a conversation so that we can get to know one another better and help you to find and to follow Jesus. Uh, I get to be here about every other week, except when vacation time hits, and then I'm away for a little bit of time, and I've missed being with you all. Amy and I we're gone for two weeks in the early part of the month. We were visiting uh, her family out in um, Missouri, and we had some good time there. And then we went through Nashville, visited some dear friends of ours, uh, and uh, also then we ended up in Greenville, Tennessee, uh, about an hour north or so of uh, Asheville. So we had a great time. We were looking every morning out, drinking our coffee, looking at the Smoky Mountains. Anybody enjoy the Smoky Mountains? Yes? Yeah, that's good stuff. So glad to be back with you here today to continue this series, Deeply Rooted. I want to welcome all of you watching online this morning as well. Some of you I know are watching from home because you're sick or you're watching from hospital rooms uh, or um, facilities because of some things that have been going on. And I am praying for you and hoping that you'll be able to be back with us in person very, very soon. If you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to turn to Matthew chapter 6. That's where we, we will be in just a few moments. But uh, I want to just take a quick survey of the room here uh, as we think about what we're going to be studying today. As we look at this subject of dollars, cents, and dividends uh, as Jesus teaches in this Sermon on the Mount. And if you are brand new with us, this is a series that will take us through Labor Day weekend here at Riverside. And we've been focusing in on this mountainside message where Jesus Jesus climbs up this mountain, his disciples, his closest followers, they come around him, and they're exploring what it means to live out a deeply rooted life, grounded in Christ, growing in Christ, grateful for what God got, what Christ has done for them, and that's certainly our posture today. So I want to get a lay of the land. While we were away on, a vaca on our vacation, a movie came out that I was very excited about seeing. It feels like it's been forever since uh, I heard that it was going to be coming out, the new Indiana Jones movie. Do we have any Indiana Jones fans here in the house? Yes. So I, as I was thinking about this new movie, there's at least a few of us here that, that uh, are excited about it, and I don't want to ruin this specific piece of, of an older movie from the Indiana Jones series. So if you haven't seen it, I won't tell you how it, how it all ends up, but this new movie recalled me, you know, it made me want to watch all the old ones, but there was a specific scene in one of the older movies, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where Indiana and the Nazi German um, bad guys are always out looking for all of these artifacts. This specific one was all about the cup, the chalice of Christ that he had at the Last Supper, and so they're looking for that. And uh, this text that we're studying today brought me back to this scene in my head as I was thinking about it. And there comes this moment toward the end of the movie where Indiana Jones and, and he's the good guy and the bad guy's in this room and they finally come into this room with all of these cups, all of these chalices. And there's an ancient knight. I mean, this guy is a couple thousand years old at this point and he has been protecting the chalice of Christ, but you don't know which one it is. And so as they're having this moment, they come in, he looks at Indiana Jones and he looks at the bad guy and he says, one of these is the cup of Christ, but you must choose wisely. Because if you choose the wrong cup, you'll die. If you choose the cup of Christ, you'll have eternal life. And so he looks at him with this gravelly voice and he says, choose wisely, you know. And so I couldn't help but think because in our text today, Jesus is going to offer us some choices. And I believe that he would want us to choose wisely. 
Now, there's a statement that Jesus makes in our text today as well that talks about our hearts. And so the big question, as we think about our choices, the big question that I want to wrestle with today is where is our heart? Where is your heart? Where is my heart? And we're not talking here about physically in your chest, where is your heart? We're not even talking about romantically, where is your heart? We're not talking about those things. We're talking about today specifically, we're focusing in on the investment of our lives. When we think about where our heart is, where is the investment of our lives? What is the concentration and the obsession and the preoccupation of our lives? What do we spend most of our time thinking about, planning for, talking about, and doing. You know, when you're headed off to vacation, that's the preoccupation, right? You got to be sure and remember everything. You got to get everything down. Make sure you have all your stuff. How many of you use a list to pack? Let me see your hands, okay? How many of you just basically wing it? Do we have wing it? Yeah. So the others of us that plan, we're the ones covering the wing it people. Yeah, okay. I get it. So we think about that and, and we're focused on it. Well, it's not just for a vacation that Jesus wants us to be thinking about the preoccupation the obsession of our lives, the investment of our lives. He wants us to think deeply rooted about this. And so with that in mind, Jesus gives us in this section of the Sermon on the Mount, he addresses the things that we're investing in. Are we investing in the things of this world or in the things of the kingdom of God? And he presents us, as I mentioned, with three choices. He mentions to us here, as we think about these three choices, he talks to us about two treasuries. We're going to unpack this in just a little bit. Two treasuries, heaven or earth. He mentions two visions, one that is generous and grows us in spiritual understanding, in spiritual vision, or a stingy vision where we lose our spiritual vision. And then thirdly, two masters, God or money. So with that in mind, would you please stand with me in honor of the Word of God? If you're new to the study of Scripture here at Riverside with us, I like to have you stand because it shows our respect and our honor for God's Word, for the Scriptures. And in a world that has devalued the Scriptures, we want to keep the value of the Scriptures high, right? Amen. So here we go. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Here's what Jesus says. He says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. He says, instead, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your, help me out, your heart will be also. So this is where this idea of where is our heart really starts to come in. Then he takes this weird turn from our Western eyes pun intended, and you'll see why in just a little bit. He says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your words that challenge us today, that invite us to intentionally think about our hearts, the investment of our lives. And Lord, as all of us will be faced, not just in these moments, but for every day of our lives with these choices, I pray that you would give us wisdom, that you would give us courage, that you would give us faith to choose wisely between these two treasuries, between these two visions, and these two masters that you present with us today. Father, I pray for those that have yet to decide to become followers, to have yet to be, decide to become Christians, those who bear your name, that as we explore this, you would open up to them you, yourself, that you might reveal yourself, your love, your care, and the links that you have gone to so that our, our lives leave a, a legacy 
and so that our lives will be spent not just now with you, but for all eternity with you. Father, I pray for the blessing over us today. I pray for our kids as they are growing and learning and being invested in. Thank you for those that are partnering with us to teach our children today. Pray for your anointing upon them and for all that's happening with Pastor Jay right now as he's preaching in Oakmont. In your name, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and precious Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and amen. Before you have a seat, would you look at your neighbor and say, choose wisely. Who was too cool to play along, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, three choices Jesus gives us today. Choice number one, treasure in heaven or on earth. We all have a decision to make where we will lay up our treasure, Jesus says. We all have treasure. Now, admittedly, some of us have more treasure than others. But we all have a certain amount of income that we spend. And where we spend that money or when we spend that money, we are making a decision as to whether we are laying up treasure in heaven or treasure on earth. Jesus counsels us, therefore, this way. He says again in verse 19, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. In the original there, it's don't treasure up treasures. In other words, Jesus says don't try to stockpile our, our wealth and try to see how much we can amass and hoard for ourselves. This is a real danger in our Western world today. Even if we don't feel like we have a lot in comparison to the rest of this world, we are doing very well. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't plan for retirement, but it does challenge us to remember that God's plan for us when we make money is that we would invest it in the lives of those around us. We are as deeply rooted followers of Jesus to be lavish with our investments in the kingdom of God. That's why if you've been around with, with us here at Riverside for very long, you know that our core values are that we want to revere God, that we want to connect with God and with others in group life, and that we want to contribute to the needs around us, both near and far. And so this speaks to that core value. Followers of Jesus, once they have found Christ and have, he has found us, we begin to follow him, and followers of Jesus who are deeply rooted live at this intersection of, re of reverence, of connection, and contribution. This comes from these kinds of texts where Jesus challenges us to pay attention to where we are investing our lives and our money and our resources. Now, I want to be very clear. The scriptures are full of wisdom. And God is not against us saving for our, pl our family and planning for retirement. Okay, I want to be clear about that. But he does want us to use our money to further his kingdom and to minister to people. So the question when you read this is, when you think about where your heart is, is what am I investing in? Ultimately, am I investing in the treasury of heaven or the treasury of earth? Jesus says in verse 20, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And then notice what he mentions here, where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. In those days, they didn't have banks like we have today. They didn't have the stock market like we have today. So people, they put their wealth into three areas. They put their wealth into garments which their garments would be made of costly materials. They didn't have easily uh, manufactured clothes like we have today. In fact, many times gold would be woven into the fabric of the really expensive clothes. And when Jesus mentions moths, well, moths don't eat what we're wearing, right? They eat what's on the rack for weeks, months, years at a time. And so Jesus is saying, hey, when you put your wealth into garments, Again, his first century listeners, they would have understood right where he was going. When you have so many garments that the moths can get to it, you've got too much. Maybe you should be investing in the kingdom. They also put their wealth into grain. And grain could be eaten and consumed by rats, 
vermin, Jesus is the, is the word Jesus uses there, insects, and certainly they could spoil. And then last but not least, gold. And theft was a bigger problem there for, than anything else when it came to gold. So when we put our wealth into worldly things, we will ultimately lose, if that's all that it is. Everything on this earth, Jesus teaches us, will pass away. If we invest everything in this earth, then ultimately, my words, maybe, is that we are poor investors, ultimately. When we stand on the threshold of eternity, all of us will have that moment. We'll have nothing to show for our lives. So Jesus is inviting us to faithfully invest our lives and our resources. And even, even when I say our resources there, they're actually all his. God owns it all, but he invites us and gives us things to steward for him, to manage for him. So he's inviting us to faithfully invest our lives and our resources in the things that will glorify our heavenly father. And I don't want any of us, as one of your pastors who loves you, who prays for you, who goes before God on your behalf to lift you up, I don't want any of us to be sorry when it's our turn to stand before our Heavenly Father and give an account of how we have invested what he has given us to steward. I don't want any of us to have regret that we didn't invest more in the things of God. When we invest in what honors the Lord, it helps to break the power of greed and the grip of materialism that attempt to hinder us from becoming deeply rooted followers of Jesus who are generous and who express our gratitude to him by our selfless, sacrificial giving. He deserves none of our leftovers. He always deserves our first and our best. I want to revisit um, what Shannon mentioned earlier in the app, because again, you can, you can sometimes tune those things out when we're talking about them, especially if we've been talking about them for a while. When we talk about Serve the Berg on August the 12th, that's just a few weeks away, this is an expression of this. I know Saturdays in the summer are precious, but I'm also going to challenge you. We've got 55 slots, 35 of them are open yet. There's still 20 slots open. If you can clean, if you can paint, if you can do electrical, they're not letting me near that team whatsoever. Uh, uh, if you can uh, do those types of things and just general maintenance, the specific ministry that we're partnering with is Sharpsburg Family Worship Center. We have known their pastors. They, they planted that, that church there about 25 years ago when Amy and I first moved to Pittsburgh. Russ and Jamie Horn are the pastors. They were just in our house on Friday night for dinner. We were hanging out and we were talking about the Serve the Berg and they're so excited. Uh, and I feel as a church that we have a responsibility to steward what God has given us. And there are some very clear facilities needs that they have to minister to children specifically. And so we have the opportunity to go into this space and make a difference. And so we get to do this together, but we need all of us to come and to serve together. So if you've kind of checked out in that moment, I just want to come. I'm not here to guilt you or to manipulate you into this. I'm here because I genuinely care that you would invest not just your dollars, but your sweat equity, your time, and your resources to invest in helping kids to find and follow Jesus in that context, just as we do here. So, again, that's a wonderful opportunity for us to invest in treasuries here on earth or treasuries here uh, up in heaven. So, that's the first choice. Second choice is generous or stingy vision, Jesus says. This choice is whether we will be generous and grow in spiritual knowledge or if we're going to be greedy and be trapped in darkness. Now, keep in mind when we read this, that Jesus here, he's talking about money. And he's using a simple illustration that would have been readily understood, easily understood in the Jewish mind. Again, it's a bit of a disconnect for us maybe as we read it. When we turn off the lights, we can't see or perceive anything because it's dark, right? If we turn the lights on, our eyes are able to see 
And as we are able to see, we can then interpret the world around us. We can interpret our environment. If our eyes don't work, it doesn't matter what we do with the lights. They could be off or on. Either way, it's dark. So to the Jewish mind, the good eye or the healthy eye equaled being generous. If you had a good eye or a healthy eye, you were a generous person. On the other hand, if you had a bad or an unhealthy eye, that meant that a person was stingy or greedy. Let me reread this to you out of Matthew chapter 6, again, verses 22, 23, and I want to put this together so you can see it. <clears throat> Jesus says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If, therefore, your eye is good, in other words, if it's healthy, if you are generous, your whole body will be full of light. In other words, you will be able to understand and perceive spiritual truth. You'll be able to understand what is happening around you in a spiritual sense. But if your eye is bad, if it's unhealthy, or if you are greedy, your whole body will be full of darkness. In other words, you will understand nothing. If, therefore, the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? In other words, it's a very dark world when you cannot understand anything spiritually. That's what Jesus is teaching here. And I was thinking about this text, and I was thinking about our time away also during our time away on vacation, Wimbledon, the uh, premier tennis tournament, the Grand Slam in England was going on. And if you've known me for more than 10 minutes, you know I love tennis. And so Amy's so gracious. You, we have football widows. We have baseball or hockey widows or whatever. Well, my wife during Wimbledon is a tennis widow, so to speak. I just am, I am just uh, watching it nonstop all day long, every day. Even if I'm not watching it, it's just in the background. Bong, bong, bong. You know, I just, I'm loving it. I'm watching it. But you know, you know what I noticed this year? It was getting harder and harder to see that little ball <laughs> if I was sitting back too far when I was wearing my contacts. When I was wearing my contacts and watching and I was across the room, I, I'd be like, <laughs> I was having a hard time. So I went and I put my glasses on and my glasses are a stronger prescription for distance. And so I was able to see it way better when I was wearing my glasses because no one wants to be blind, right? It's painful, it's difficult when we can't see, when one of any of our senses are hampered or restricted. And I want to ask a question to you based on what you're reading here today. What if our ability or our inability to experience spiritual understanding is tied to our generosity? I believe Jesus is saying here that our generosity affects our vision, spiritually speaking. It affects how well we understand the word of God and how his kingdom works. In other words, when we're reading, when we're praying, when we're studying, when we're navigating through this life and making decisions, we will have a greater capacity to see and understand and greater revelation of the things of God and the kingdom of God all around us if we will generously invest in what God cares about. But when we are stingy, when we are greedy, when we hang on to all that is ours, we will suffer in a spiritual capacity to see and understand and clearly interpret our environment spiritually so that when we say to God, Lord, guide me, direct me, open up the scriptures, but I'm going to hang on to everything that's mine, God. I'm not going to invest in the kingdom. God says, good luck with that. It is going to be dark. But if we will invest ourselves in what he cares about, invest in his kingdom, his initiatives, the things that Jesus was about, there's light and there's a capacity to see and clearly understand and begin to grow 
in our spiritual vision. Deeply rooted followers are growing in our vision for generosity and in our passion for generosity. Choice number one, two treasuries, heaven or earth. Choice number two, two visions, generous or stingy. Choice number three, God or money as master. Here's what Jesus says, verse 24. No one, not even him, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That word for serve there comes from the Greek word doulos, which was a slave who had no rights. Slavery at that time wasn't like what we normally think about it. We've talked a lot about that here at the church over the years. Slavery was a full-time occupation. There wasn't freedom, wasn't a great experience, no matter how you slice it. It required total devotion. And Jesus says here, following me requires total devotion. You can't serve two masters. We can't serve God and money at the same time. Think about this for just a moment, if you will. God, he wants us to have faith. Money and materialism tell us to walk by sight. God wants us to be humble. Money and materialism, they want us to be proud. Look at all that I have amassed. Look, I have barns and vats and storage units for all my stuff. That's what money and materialism wants us to pursue. God wants us to set our eyes and our heart on eternal things that are above. Money and materialism, they tell us to set our affections on the temporal and the here and now. God wants us to have peace, but ultimately, at the end of the day, the pursuit, the, the consuming pursuit of money and materialism cause us to have anxiety. And Jesus is going to continue this conversation next week as it relates to anxiety and worry. You're not going to want to miss it. So when you think about this third choice, it begs the question, who am I serving? Who am I serving? Am I growing in generosity? We've talked about this before, but I'm going to review it again. And for those of you maybe that have never heard it, maybe this will begin to help you to understand the natural progression of becoming a deeply rooted person who is grounded, growing, and grateful. Out of this begins for all of us as spontaneous givers. We begin by, by giving spontaneously to invest in the things of God and the things that honor our Heavenly Father. We're, we're pulled emotionally by something. We spontaneously are inspired or something breaks our heart and we give toward that. But there's no strategic element to that. It's just whenever we feel the motivation, whenever we feel the heart tug, we all start as spontaneous givers. Nothing wrong with that. But the invitation from our Heavenly Father is to move from being spontaneous givers to being strategic givers, to pick a percentage of what we have been entrusted with. The scriptures recommend we start with 10%, and we strategically choose to invest in the treasuries of heaven, in the things of the kingdom of God, what honors our heavenly Father. And so we strategically choose that. We say, God, I'm going to strategically choose to give you this percentage to invest so that my heart goes where my treasure is. And so we strategically choose that. And then as we grow and as we develop and as we see the trustworthiness and the faithfulness of the provision of God and over our lives, we then are able to move to sacrificial givers where we are both strategic and spontaneous, where we've chosen our percentage. We're saying, God, I'm going to live on 90%. I'm going to live on 85%. I'm going to live on 80% of what you've entrusted to me and then when I feel the tug, when I feel the whisper, when I feel the inspiration, I'm going to give above and beyond that. That's the progression of deeply rooted people, followers of Christ who are grounded, growing, and grateful. Three choices Jesus gives us. Heaven, earth, generous, stingy, God, or money, 
as our master. And in these three choices, we have to choose who we are going to serve. We have to choose what we are going to see. And we have to choose whether we will invest in eternity or things here on earth. And the great news from the words of the scripture is that there's not guilt over all of this. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. He didn't come to shame us, or condemn us. I'm not here to manipulate you or coerce you, try to control you. But when you experience what we're talking about to hear, when you make the wise choices, when you choose to invest in heaven, when you choose to have generous vision, when you choose God as master, there is a joy, there's an overflowing sense of generosity, there is a cheerfulness that is so much healthier and so much more freeing than trying to be stingy, trying to invest everything here on this earth and trying to let money and materialism pull you and drag you and become your master. Something that Jesus wants for us. And if we'll choose his way, we become deeply rooted. Before we wrap up, I want to share something with you. It's in, it's in your app, uh, and I would love to have a conversation with you afterwards. We are reaching that point uh, in our year where we will be beginning the intense preparation for our next international missions trip. It's called Impact Dominican Republic, Impact DR. Currently, even as we speak right now, we've got a team in Cambodia, and Shannon's gonna share with you some stuff at the end, uh, some inspirational stories. We're hearing great things. We've got 19 uh, students and young adults in Cambodia, and God's doing great things right now. But if you've never been on an international mission trip, we're going in February next year for a week to the Dominican Republic, partnering with Chad and Terry Nelson. We've been there um, several times as a church, both our student ministry as well as our adult ministry. And there's an application inside of the app. I can help you get that. And uh, there's a group that will be formed this fall where we will all prepare you and whether or not you go on the Dominican Republic trip in February or you're just preparing yourself for international missions or even local regional missions, that's all that group is called Impact. Mike Wolf, our missions and outreach pastor is going to be leading that group in the fall to prepare. It's a prerequisite to go on the trip. So we want you to be prepared. But this specific trip, we're gonna be there for seven days, eight days, um, and uh, we're gonna be partnering with Convoy of Hope right there on the ground. We'll be doing food distribution. We'll be ministering to children. There are 15,000 people around this dump that need the good news, that come there every day for feeding and for help and for assistance. And we're gonna go and we're gonna minister to them. There are uh, clubs and groups for women that we're gonna be investing in these ladies to teach them and to train them and develop them so that they have the skills to be able to provide for their families. We're gonna be investing in discipleship. Uh, our, our approach, learning to follow Jesus approach, the materials that we use, there are um, a thousand books being printed right now, putting into the hands of hundreds of people in their churches when we're gonna go and we're gonna train how to be disciple makers. We're looking for teachers to go on this trip to invest in teachers in the public schools. You know how hard it is for us to get in to the public schools here in the States? No holds barred in the Dominican Republic. Jesus followers can go in and train and develop and invest in kids. We'll be looking to do programs inside of the public schools there. So there's a lot of different opportunities for all of us to go. And there's only 20 slots, almost half of them are filled, but I wanted you to be aware that that's coming up in case the Lord would nudge you today, say, I wanna go and I wanna invest my life and my resources into that trip coming up in February. Being deeply rooted means that we gratefully choose 
to be grounded and growing in generosity. We pursue, remember what I said, God wants us to be full of faith, full of humility, full of eternity, full of peace, whereas the pursuit and when money is our master, it's just the antithesis of all of those things. We as deeply rooted followers of Jesus, we pursue those things. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for being a generous Heavenly Father. Lord, you are faithful and you are reliable and you desire to meet us in this conversation regarding our finances. As we process, Lord, what you've said to us today, would you please fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we'll have the strength and the courage and the discipline to choose to serve and honor you with the resources that you've entrusted to us. Please develop within us the habit of generosity and open-handedness to invest in your kingdom initiatives. Help us, Heavenly Father, to trust you with our finances and put you first. Lord, as we do, would you please, please cultivate within us deeper capacities to understand and perceive spiritual truth. Break the power of greed, materialism, and stinginess within us. And Lord, start right here with me. We acknowledge, Lord, that we can't serve both you and money. We confess that tension and we ask for forgiveness for putting money and stuff ahead of you in any way that we might have. Thank you that you're not here to condemn us. You're wooing us. You're drawing us by your Holy Spirit. We want you to be our master. So we submit ourselves to you. May this prayer today in this moment begin to change the trajectory of our lives. As we become strategic percentage givers and mature in sacrificial giving in eternal ways. We pray this in the name of our most generous Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.